Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and welcome to part 3 of explaining what most of the DDR4 timings do. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at TRP and TRAS. Um, yeah, because in the previous episode we sort of, like, I introduced TRP and TRAS, but we didn't really get into, and we got, like, we went over to sort of the concept of TRC, this idea that, like, you can't, like, certain memory chips can't deal with having... Uh, to activate commands to the same bank of the same bank group uh, too close together, right? So, like, here we have an activate to bank group A, bank A, uh, and then here we have this activate to bank group A, bank A. And on some memory chips, if you try to put those two activate commands, you know, really close together, it causes data corruption. Um, so what we have in this scenario, uh, well, it, it causes data corruption. Wait a minute, did I just screw this up? No, no I didn't, okay. <laughs> I was really worried I screwed up my demonstration here. So, um, now, in a, like, so here we have multiple read bursts. I think it's six in total, let me check. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. So here we have six read bursts, but if you're doing like two, di two read bursts to different rows of the same bank, um, you're basically, you're going to hit the, like, your TRC is basically going to hit the, like, TRAS TR TRP limit, is what it's going to hit. Um, it, well, if you have a Ryzen CPU, you just have a TRC register, and you can just use that, and then you can just punch in whatever the hell you want into your TRAS register, because it doesn't matter anymore. Um, but, uh, if you don't have a Ryzen CPU, and you have, like, an Intel chip, you, like, lowering your TRAS too much can cause instability. Um, so what you want to do is, well, where was I going with this? So, yeah, so there's this, like, concern of, like, setting your TRAS too low, or more like having your, it's not really setting TRAS too low. Configuring your timings such that your activates end up too close together and getting data corruption. There. It's, I hate this. <laughs> It's so clunky to talk about. Also, this is specifically for activates of the same bank, okay? Like, if you were trying to activate other banks, there are completely different timings uh, that we would be talking about here. But, yeah. No, today we're, we're talking about still the same bank. We're always hitting bank A of bank group A. So, anyway, um, the... You know, so let's say we have a memory chip that cannot handle a TRC of less than 64, right? So that's what we have here, uh, which is a realistic value for, say, micron memory chips at like 3800 megabits per second or 1.9 gigahertz. Um, and uh, Hynix chips generally go a bit lower. Samsung VDI goes crazy, crazy low. But um, actually, I think there's quite a few Samsung chips that might go really low on TRC, but... Anyway, especially Micron chips have a weak TRC for whatever reason. They just really don't like it if you put your activate commands right up against each other uh, on the same bank. Uh, which is kind of annoying because this is a pretty important timing for in terms of performance, but, well, whatever. So, the thing is, there's a few different ways to achieve the same TRC value, right? Like, if, here we have this example with 16 and 48, and 16 plus 48 is 64. But the other way you can get 64 is something like 20 and, I mean, 24 and 40, right? That's That also adds up to 64. Um, you could even have something like 27 and uh, 37, right? Um, that, that also still adds up to 64. And admittedly, if you have a Ryzen CPU and your TRC register set to 64, like, you can punch in whatever TRAS value you want, and it's just not going to do anything. But, uh, if you're on an Intel CPU, this is actually kind of important, because, uh, well, at least with 12th gen Intel CPUs, you can trade, uh, TRP, like, you can trade TRP and TRAS in order to get different TRC values. Um, so... You know, like, you, so if you have a memory chip that can't deal with a TRC of less than 64, you're basically stuck running either, like, 1648 uh, or potentially, you know, the what I mentioned earlier was, like, 24 and 40. Which of these is better for, for, for performance? And the answer is very simple. It's 1648. And the reason it's always going to be low, like, you should always prioritize the TRP timing is because on... 
Well, actually, there's a funny... <laughs> if you have pre-12th gen Intel CPUs, actually, I'm not sure if 11th gen allowed separate TRP adjustment, but uh, 10th gen, 9th gen, 8th gen, 7th gen, 6th gen uh, Intel CPUs uh, don't have a TRP register. Straight up. There's no TRP timing on those CPUs. They just use whatever... Well, they, 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 have a, they obviously have a TRP timing, as in, like, there's a certain amount of time that the memory controller waits for a pre-charge command to complete, but, uh, there isn't a dedicated register for it. Your TRP value on, like, a 9900K is your TRCD value. So if you punch in a TRCD of 19, um, and then set a, like, well, your TRP is 19. Like, that's just how that works. Now, on some motherboards, the implement like, gigabyte motherboards will have a TRP timing, and uh, we'll have like a TRP timing option in the BIOS, but how that actually works is that it'll take whichever of the two timings is higher. So if you have your TRCD set to 19 and TRP set to 20, your TRCD is now 20. If you have your TRCD set to 20 and your TRP set to 19, your TRP is now 20. Um, whichever one is higher is the one that actually gets used. Um, because, yeah, those older Intel CPUs just couldn't, couldn't, like, can't have a TRP value that is different from the TRCD value. Um, Ryzen CPUs don't have any such issue. You can have whatever TRP value you want, independent of TRCD. 12th gen Intel CPUs work the same way. You can have whatever TRP value you want, separate from TRCD, with the exception of Gigabyte motherboards, because their BIOS hasn't implemented the, the TRP timing properly yet. I don't know. Well, yeah. Um, last I checked, that still wasn't working on Gigabyte boards. It works on MSI and Asus. Anyway, so you have this option. So on some CPUs, you have this option to... Well, so on CPUs where your TRP is linked to TRCD, low TRCD is very important for performance, right? We, we already know that TRCD is very important for performance because that's like your idle to re read delay, basically. Like, if you're, like, that's your act to read delay. So if you, you know, well, well just TRCD is very important. It gets used a lot. Anytime you need to activate a row, the first, like, the delay from that activation to the next command, that's TRCD. Um, so, you know, you don't want to be making your TR, like, you don't want to be raising your TRCD unless you absolutely have to. So doing something like, so if you had, like, a 9900K, doing something like this would be really dumb. Okay, that that's really dumb if you have like a 9900K, 10900K, that kind of thing. Um, if you have one of those CPUs, what you'd want to probably do, it, well, what you'd do, it, assuming you had a memory chip that doesn't do less than TRCD less than 19, is you would punch in something like this and your TRAS would be 47. Um, is that right? No, that's not right. It would be 45, right? And this is the configuration you would want to use. Uh, if you're on Ryzen, then of course we're going to go all the way down to like 1648. And now, why do we want that really low TRP? And the answer for this is that the TRAS timing is extremely specific as to when it actually is relevant. And in the one scenario where it's relevant, this trade-off between TRP and TRAS doesn't make a difference, right? Because the only time we really care about TRAS is if we need to, like, if if we're doing the, you know... This scenario, which we covered in part two, where we're doing a read from one row and then immediately doing another read, but from a different row of the same bank. And so in this scenario, TRAS is very important because it sets when we can start the pre-charge um, of the current, op like, of our first row. So, um, yeah. But the thing is, uh, if we're trading TRP for TRAS in order to satisfy our TRC requirements, uh, this activate command ends up in the same like same place regardless, right? Like if we have, uh, so here we have a TRC of 46 with a TRP of 14 and TRAS of 32. We pre-charge on cycle 32 and we activate on 46. Alternatively, we could have something like say 16 and 30 16 and 30 and it would basically like it would still work out the same because we would be sure we would start the pre-charge on cycle 30 but it would now take we'd be waiting 16 cycles for the the pre-charge to complete before we send that activate so it would still end up on 46 so in this scenario this trade-off literally doesn't matter at all 
Like, it doesn't make a difference. You could have super low TRP and super loose, like, super high TRAS, or you can have super high TRP and super low TRAS. Doesn't matter. Your performance stays the same, because you're still hitting that same TRC timing. Your next activate command will always be on the same cycle. However, what if we're not only doing a single uh, read from our first row? Right? Like, if we activate row 1, 2, 3, we can hit it with multiple reads. There's, 1, 000, uh, there's 1,024 columns in row 1, 2, 3, which means uh, we could do a lot of reading in row 1, 2, 3 without ever, like, without pre-charging it for, like, ages. And that's what this example is taking a look at. So, we activate the row, all right, then TRCD cycles later, we start a read to column 12. And then seven cycles later, we do a read to column 35. And this is controlled by the read to read same group timing, which is the Intel naming convention for that timing. I can't remember what it's called on Ryzen CPUs right now. AMD doesn't provide, like, actually, I suspect it's the RDRD SCL timing. I'm not 100% certain about that because AMD doesn't have any public timing documentation, unlike Intel, because I have no idea why they don't provide that documentation. AMD has it. I mean, Intel has it. And then with AMD, yeah, it doesn't exist. Anyway, so we're using the Intel naming convention because with Intel CPUs, I'm 100% certain of what this timing does. With AMD CPUs, uh, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so we have this read-to-read -read same group delay, uh, same group timing of 7, uh, which is a pretty common like limit for this timing at higher memory speeds. Um, also, de again, depends on what memory chip you have, but basically this says we can send read command, like, so we can send consecutive read commands, right? It's read to read, so back-to-back -back read, uh, back-to-back -back read commands to the same bank group, right? That's the SG, same group, so same bank group, uh, every seven cycles. So, and it doesn't make a differentiation if it's the same bank in the same bank group or a different bank in the same bank group. The important part is that we're hitting the same bank group. Um, so what we can do is we can do a read on column 12 and then another read on column 35 and then another read on column 64 and then another read on column 73 and then another read on column 87, right? Um, this first read obviously starts putting data on the data bus uh, 14 clock cycles later, right? That's our TCL timing over here. That's 14 cycles away, 19 to 33. Um, and in the meantime, we're just mashing these read commands in there. And so, you know, our TRAS right now is set to 48. So TRAS expires over here, right? Like we haven't even finished doing all of our read operations yet and TRAS is already over. So TRAS is no longer gonna limit us when we, whenever we decide to pre, whenever we decide that we're finished with reading operations and we wanna pre-charge. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, this still doesn't work out quite as nicely as I wanted it to, because that pre-charge command is still, like, really close to that last read. Um, I, like, but you get the idea. If I just kept adding read commands, right? Again, there's a thousand and twenty-four columns. Each read command only reads eight of them, right? So you could be hitting the same row. Like, if you wanted to empty an entire row, it takes a hundred and twenty-eight read commands to do it. Actually, you're not emptying it. But if you wanted to read an entire row, you need 128 read commands to do that. Um, and so if you're hitting a row with, you know, like te like multiple, like double digit or triple digit numbers of read commands, the TRAS timing is completely irrelevant because this activate command is going to be miles away from whenever you actually stop reading the row, right? Like it's going to be hundreds of clock cycles in the past, potentially. So TRAS very quickly ends up expiring and doesn't matter anymore. Um, and so now what's sort of important is the TRP timing, because when we do decide to pre-charge, right, we want to finish that pre-charge as quickly as possible. So, because that's kind of the thing. So if we start the pre-charge on cycle 55 over here, like, TRAS isn't going to affect it anymore. TRC, we're not going to violate TRC at this point, all right? And we start our pre-charge on cycle 55, and we can send the next activate on cycle 71, and then we get this next read burst down here. All right, whereas if we went the other way of, you know, say, I don't know, like, 40, 24, um, or actually, let's make it more extreme, 27 TRP, 
37 TRAS, right? So TRAS expires here. Um, we're nowhere near done finish, f finished with our reads yet, right? Like we've still got two more read commands to go before we get to our precharge command. Our precharge command still ends up in the same place because the precharge command right now is relative to our last read operation, right? That's what our RTP timing is for. But now that we've finally decided to pre... Like, now that we're finally done reading from this row and we've, you know, decided to pre-charge it, uh, we end up with this lovely situation of this pre-charge takes forever because it is... 27 cycles long instead of 16 and so our next like that activate command that was previously on cycle 71 yeah that activate command now ends up on 55 plus 27 which is 75 plus 7 which is 83 right no 82 um so it ends up here yes um yeah, it ends up over here, which, uh, not ideal, as you can probably tell. Like, we've literally just added 11 more clock cycles between, uh, our last read operation, and, like, last read operation in the first row, and our first read operation, well, all of our future operations in the next row, right? So, we now take 113 clock cycles to complete this instead of uh, 112. Well, literally, it's plus, plus 11, right? So, yeah, that's, that's why you want, like, so if you're in a situation where you're trading TRP for TRAS for stability, TRP takes priority because, like, as long as you're, like, as long as TRP plus TRAS is the same thing, um, you're not actually going to improve the, you know, the TRAS, like the TRC limited scenario. Um, and you're going to be hurt. And if you're boot, like raising your TRP timing, you're hurting the uh, like TRP limited scenarios, right? Like a TRP limited scenario would be what we're looking at here because like we're miles away from the TRAS. We're, we're never going to violate the, the activate timing at this point. And so it makes zero sense to be punching in a TRP of 27. So if you've got the option, you want to set your TRP as low as possible. And I guess if you're on a Ryzen motherboard, assuming that the motherboard doesn't like do anything weird with the TRAS versus TRC thing, one, one thing you could do is just set your TRAS really low and then like tune TRC and, T and only tune your TRC and TRP timings and just ignore the fact that TRAS exists. Uh, alternatively, um, well, and if you're on an Intel CPU, well, you don't have a TRC register, so in that scenario, yeah, you have to end up with timings like that. Um, so this is better than, um, you know, like, th th this is better for performance than 14, 19, 20, 44, or 24, 40, right? Like, th like especially if you're on Intel, you might actually end up on with a scenario where something like this is actually like important to set uh, on Ryzen you do, do very conveniently just have that TRC register so you know you, you can just like if you want good looking screenshots you can, you can just kind of punch in whatever TRAS you want on a lot of motherboards um, but uh, yeah anyway so that's that's the only thing I wanted to cover in today's video was just like you know What's more important, TRP or TRAS? The answer is TRP. Definitely TRP. So, yeah, if you have a TRC limited memory chip, get that TRP as low as possible. And don't worry, like, and, and then... And then just set your TRAS appropriate to your TRP timing, right? Like, there. That's, that's the best way to do this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. So hopefully... That made sense, and it's helpful, and thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon. There's a link to it down in the description. Then I also have a AHOC Teespring store. Recently added a new hoodie design to that, so you might want to check that out. There's also shirts and posters and, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And then uh, I have a Bandcamp, and there's a link to all of that down in the description below. 
So Teespring, Patreon, Bandcamp. There should also be links to previous parts of this video series. Um, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and goodbye.